Good morning. Good morning to all of you. Good morning. Good morning, people of God. Listen, come on in the room. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will be glad in this day. Come on in the room. Come on in the room. It's time for our morning devotion. It's time for us to give God what it is that he desires. It's time for us to give him our first. It's time for us to give him not only our first, but it's time for us to give the Lord our first and our best. We're giving the Lord our best. Yes, we are. Good morning to you, Sister Nicole. It is time for us, even as we think about today and uh, think about everything. Good morning, um, Sister Janet, to Sister Terry, Sister Bernice, Sister Monique. Good morning. Even as we think about all the things that happened throughout last weekend, not only last weekend, but over the past 40 days of how we celebrated the resurrection of Jesus Christ, up to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Good morning, Sister Rebecca, Sister Stephanie, Sister Donna. Good morning to all of you. Thank you for greeting me as you come in. Thank you for greeting one another as you come into the room. It is time for us to bless the Lord this morning. Good morning, Sister Miller. So good to see you. So good to see you. We're going to be talking about really living my blessed life, living the life that is good for me, and, and making really the rest of our lives this is the best of our lives. That can start how? It can start today. Father God, we just bless your name, Lord, and we praise you, God, just for who you are. We thank you for this word, oh God, this word, God, that's quickening our spirits to make us to know, Lord God, that you desire the best for us, Lord God. And because you desire the best for us, you give us a word that we'll be able to use and to follow, Lord God, so that the best will follow us. We thank you for all things that shall take place in the next few minutes. I thank you for the word of God that shall drop into the spirits and the hearts of the men and women that will hear it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. This morning, uh, good morning, Sister Rise. Good morning to you, Sister Angela. To all of you that are joining, I just thank God for you. I thank God for your commitment to just uh, be in the presence of God wherever you are. And I just pray that on um, the word that is being shared, not only this morning, but throughout the days that you're listening, whether on social media, internet, Facebook, YouTube, whatever it is, that that word is being you know, engrafted to your heart, that you might be a changed people. Good morning to you, Bishop Jones. Thank you so much for joining. Listen, I know that everyone had a wonderful service on yesterday. I could see all the services and, and how you were really giving God praise and how you were really lifting him up. And today I really want to talk about that because sometimes we, we lead up to a certain thing. Good morning, Sister Mary. We lead up to um, the climax of something. And then when that thing happens, when that wonderful thing happens, that wonderful celebration happens, then we kind of drop off. So we stop, you know, pressing as we were pressing in before. We were stop, we stop really giving God the glory that we were giving him before. Good morning, Pastor Stewart, Sister Valerie, good morning, that we were giving him before. And we stop because again, we were moving toward a certain thing. And then we're off on to the next thing. So the word of the Lord in um, Psalms 90, um, verses 12 is what I'm going to be talking about. Um, and, and what the word is really saying to us is, it says, teach us to number our days and recognize how few they are and help us to spend them as we should is what the word is saying to us. Teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Good morning, Sister Sherilyn. And again, it's, it's just saying, teach us so that we know we got to recognize the days that we have and be able to spend the days that we ought to, you know, in the way that we should spend them, not wasting them, not, you know, doing bad things so that we know that will come back on us, you know, later on. But help us to arrange and prioritize the time that we have, because as the word of God is saying here, Time is fast approaching. My mother used to always say, time is not as long as it used to be. Good morning, Sister Tyree. Time is fast approaching. And in the writer here wanted us to remember that the days that we have left, they're growing smaller and smaller every day. And we had to make a conscious decision. Good morning, Sister Mary, Sister Sherry. A conscious decision that, listen, we're all going to leave here one day. And sometimes we are busy with, you know, just with life situations. And we don't really make the conduct, the the um, the, the connection, I will say, between what we're doing, between uh, what we, the connection between what we're doing and the length of our life. Even as I think about children, you know, the Bible says, honor your mother and your father that your days will be long on this earth. And what is it simply saying? Not that your parents are going to kill you if you don't honor them, but th just that, that you live your life in a way that you are honoring your parents. Listen, so that you will make wise decisions for your life. 
and that your decisions that you make will uh, allow you to end up in a wrong place, a bad position, even killed. You know, so there are things that we've got to think about are how our the connection between our conduct and the number of our days. And we got to say, you know, I got to think about the rest of my life being the very best of my life. And I say the rest of my life, good morning, Brother Edward, being the, my blessed life. I want to live a blessed life. All of us want to live a blessed life. The Bible talks about in uh, Proverbs, if you want wisdom, get wisdom, but also get understanding. You can't forget to hear the, the voice of God. Don't forsake wisdom. Wisdom will preserve you, preserve you all throughout your life. But there is an accountability to the things that you do. And, and there is some urgency about the situation. Romans talks about that in Romans 13. It says, and do this and knowing this, knowing that the time now is the time to awake out of your sleep. It's time to get up for your salvation is nearer than you first believed. The time is going and the night is far spent. The day is at hand. Um, therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. We have, to, we have to be careful about how we live our life so that our life becomes the best life, the blessed life that we can live. There's a story about someone talking about life being like a dollar bill. So you can spend it any way you want to, but you can only spend it one time. Your life, you can live it any way you want to, but you can only live it one time. Now you can spend the money you can spend it on something that's good or you can waste the money. You can invest the money. Same thing as it goes with your life. Good morning, Sister April. Same thing goes with your life. You can spend it, you can waste it, or you can invest it. So it doesn't matter how young you are. It doesn't matter how old you are. You still got to make the rest of your life become the best of your life by doing the right things, by making the right decisions. And it doesn't matter if you just became saved. It doesn't matter, you know, if you're 60 and you, you just now found the Lord. You are old enough, listen, and mature enough in the things of God that you know how you should be living. Why? If you don't know, we ask God. We ask God how we should be living so that this moment right now begins the, the journey for us to the best life that we can live. And you can think about this every day. I mean, every day, if you feel like you're getting down the dumps, you feel like you're getting in some type of a pit of despair, you have got to think about this has to be the beginning of the best day of my life. And I'm going to live my blessed life. I'm going to live my best life, but I'm going to live my blessed life. And so what is the Lord saying to us in how we live our best life? First thing you got to do, good morning, Sister Rita, Sister Mary. The first thing you need to do is you got to seek first the kingdom of God, of God. I always talk about first things first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God in his righteousness and everything shall be added unto you. And what do you think the Lord is saying here in that? He's saying, listen, first things are first. First things are first. That sounds simple, I know. But sometimes we don't put Jesus first. We don't put God first. We don't put his word first. And when situations come up, sometimes we don't think about him first. Why is that? Because we're constantly pulling on the old things, the old way that we would act, the old way that we would behave. But when we, when we put the Lord first, listen, it transforms your life. And it makes your life to be the best life that you can live. It makes your life to be the blessed life that the Lord has called for you to live. There is a passage um, as I was studying the word of God. And as we were coming out of resurrection, the disciples um, had spent 40 days with Jesus after the resurrection. And they were standing at the Mount of Olives, the disciples were, and they were, and the Lord was giving them some instruction. He was giving them some final words of destruction while they, and while they are watching him, the Lord begins to ascend. He begins to ascend and rise up into heaven. And, and then he's gone. He's taken from their presence. And they are left there wondering what is going on. They're left there wondering. They're on the mountain there without the Lord Jesus Christ. And in that moment, I could imagine that the disciples are saying, what in the world is going on here? And they're probably, their minds are probably saying, they're not really thinking about what the Lord had already spoken to them, but their minds are probably confused about it. And the, and the word of the Lord says, while they are standing, looking up at the sky, the messenger from God appeared and it says, ye men of Galilee, why are you standing, gazing up into heaven? 
The angel says, listen, what are you looking at? In other words, he's saying, what is it that has your attention? What is it that you're focused on? What are you looking at? And sometimes I would say, you know, that Jesus is, was giving the dis- instructions to the disciples. And, and I wonder why, you know, the disciples were in amazement or bewilderment because the Lord is saying to you, I already told you I was going. I already told you that I was going to ascend into heaven in John 16, 28. The word says, I came forth from the father and have come into the world again. I will leave the world and go to the father. So they already knew he was going to ascend, but they were wasting time. Is, is where I'm going with this. They were wasting time looking up at Jesus, wondering what in the world, why are you leaving? What are we going to do without you? But the Lord has given us many instructions while we're sitting around wasting time. You know, while you're trying to figure it out, the Lord has already worked it out. While you're standing around in amazement, your mouth is open because of something that the Lord has done that he's already given you the instruction about. We're wasting time standing around. We're wasting time fighting one another. We're wasting time talking about one another. We're wasting time doing things that God never told us to do. But he's instructing us, if you want to live your blessed life, there are some things that you got to do. So first thing you got to do is you got to you got to put God first. You, there are some priorities that you got to have in your life. And sometimes as people of God, we don't have those priorities. This is a meditation. I'm just talking about the things that are going to bless us as we walk out this life journey that the Lord has for us. Because after the resurrection, there were some things that happened for us. The Lord did that for us. That we would be equipped to do what it was that we needed to do to live the best life that we could live. So we got to set some priorities. We got to have some priorities, people of God. We, you know, everything, everything hinges around the value that you put on them. But if your priorities are not in the right order, then your life will not be in the right order. If your priorities are not right, then you will not be right. You, 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 I mean, that doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. So you don't have to pray about what your, your, your number one priority in life ought to be. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to discuss it. You already know what the Bible says is seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. I know we, we want to put, you know, put our husbands first. We want to put our children first. Some things we want to put our job first. I heard the Lord, he said, I'm a jealous God though. He says, you should have no other gods before me. And even though you say, well, they're not gods but when you put them before the Lord, when you go to them before you go to God, when you move everything around, when you don't, you know, you forsake the assembling of yourselves because you're, you're worried about what's going on with this person, that person, you rather hang out with them than hang out with God. We talk about seeking the will of God or seeking God first. We're talking about pursuing him, actively pursuing the Lord God. There's a song, a songwriter wrote a song that says, I'm chasing after you. I'm seeking you. I'm pursuing you. I'm going after you. And so what that means is just every day, every day that you wake up, you ought to be pursuing, going after the things of God. You ought to be seeking the kingdom of God first. Now, in order to seek the kingdom of God, you got to first seek the king. I'm talking about the risen king, the one that we all heard about so much all over this weekend. I'm talking about the risen king, the one who rose from the dead. Listen, God raised Jesus from the dead. And when he raised him, he raised him with all power in his hand. That, you know, and that's the exciting part. But the even more exciting part about that is that when God raised Jesus from the dead, because we were resurrected in the likeness of him, my God, we were raised with that same power. You have the same same power, listen, to, to tread on the head of the enemy. You have the same power to heal the sick, the same power to raise the dead. You have the same power to open blinded eyes, the same power. Listen, you have to forgive those who have done something against you, have committed things against you. You have the same power. Good morning, Sister Nimby. Thank you for joining even at the hour that you are in. But we got the same power. So as we are seeking the kingdom, we have to understand we got to seek the king. We got to seek King Jesus. And, and all, like I said, all through the weekend, we've been talking about him. We've been talking about the risen king. He is risen like he said, but we've got to seek him. And so on this Monday after the resurrection, we don't go back to business as usual because we want to live our blessed life. 
We want to live the very best life that we can live. We don't go back to business as usual. We go back, listen, to seeking the Lord even the more because we, listen, because we've learned how much the Lord loves us. The passion of Jesus, the compassion of Jesus for us, what he did for us on the cross, no one ever could, will do again. But he did that to save us and save us to the uttermost. So the Christian life, our life is more than just, is more than just accepting God. It is seeking him, seeking him in our lives, seeking him for what the, he wants to do through you. He is seeking him. And even now I say this, um, the Lord doesn't have any favorites. He doesn't pay. He says, I'm no respecter of person. But he does have those he is intimate with. James 4 and 8, it says, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. So the Lord has promised. He says, if you will seek me, you will find me. And when you search for me with all of your heart. That's found in Jeremiah 29. He says, listen, I don't have no favorites, but there are some people that seek me. There are some people that search me out and they'll find me. There are some people that go the extra mile to get close to me. And sometimes, listen, in the natural, we don't like that. In the natural, even from the standpoint of our pastors or our leaders, we don't like when other people get too close to them. But just like the Lord here is saying, listen, I don't have any favorites, but there are some people that just hang out with me. There are some people that seek after me. There are some people that check on me. There are some people that ask me how I'm doing. There are some people that draw near to me so they can get more from me. There are some people that just, listen, that just are going Mm, are coming after me because they know that I have something for them. So we can't get mad or upset when it seems like someone else may have more favor. He doesn't have favorites. But he says, I do have some people that are intimate to me because they are seeking me. Some people are just passive in this thing. But listen, Christianity, that walk is an active walk. We can't just passively walk, passively walk this earth. And then believe that we're going to live our best life. You have to reach out for him. You've got to press into the more of him. Because when you do, what does he say? If you draw near to me, God says, listen, I'm, I'm coming close. I'm coming close to you. I'm going to speak into your life. I'm going to breathe life into you. When you draw closer to me, you will get what it is that you are looking for. What are you looking for from God? I mean, it's just, it's just by faith, but faith is what faith is the substance. The Bible says of things hoped for is the evidence of things that are not seen. Faith is a belief that God is going to do what he said. Everything that you've heard from the word of God that you know the Lord is going to do that he said he's going to do. Faith means that you believe that. And if it comes today, tomorrow, two years from now, or 10 years from now, you're holding on to that faith that God is going to do it. But faith really is just putting God first is putting him first. Is putting him first. So the Lord, listen, he, he's looking at you like, not only, we're talking about priorities here. He says, not only, not only do I want first place in your life, I don't, I don't just want a place. I want first place. I don't want, I don't want prominence. I want preeminence in your life. He says, I need to be the one that you call on. I need to be, listen, that all that in a bag of chips to you. I need to be who it is that you are at work is seeking, seeking, searching out for your life's sake to make your life the best life, the blessed life that you can have. And Jesus wants that first. He wants the first every day. I just bless God for the word of God that's going forth even over the airwaves every single day. That men and women might be able to grab a word and hold on to a word and get the revelation that they need that's going to impact their lives in a mighty way. So first things first, our first fruit, our first praise, our first worship, our first meditation, our first devotion, our first thank you, our first love, it ought to be to God. Every day of the week, the Lord wants that first for us. Listen, just like in a beauty pageant where you have first, second, third, the Lord is not interested in being the runner up. He's not interested in being a runner up in a, in a contest. He's not interested in being your co-pilot. He's not interested in being your vice president. He's not interested in being as the second command in the army. He's not interested in being the one after you've gone to everybody else, then you try Jesus. He's not interested in that at all. 
He wants you to seek him first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek the kingdom of God. Seek the rule of God. Seek the reign of God in your life and watch things turn around and you are living the best life, the blessed life that you can live. When? It can start today as you put him first. You know, forgetting all the other stuff that happens. I know there are a lot of things that go on. There's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of chatter that goes on even among brothers and sisters in Christ. Forgetting all of that chatter. Stop talking about other people and start talking about God. Stop. The, you know, the Bible says don't let your good be evil spoken of. There are many things that we can talk about and we know we think is, is doing a good thing. But listen, start, start talking about Jesus. Start putting him first. Let him be Lord of your life. Let him be Lord of your life. And when you do that, then the Lord will be concerned with what's going on with you. Has it ever occurred to you that if your will was that God's will would always be done in your life, then your will would always be done. If your will was that God's will would always be done in your life, then your will will always be done. I love the scripture, Psalm 37 and 4, where it says, Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. I like that scripture because people say, Yo, everything, everything I ask God for, it is, I get it. It is the desire of my heart, the desire of my heart. And I say, well, why would it, why would the Lord do that for me? He do it for me because I'm asking God, whatever your will is for me, God, let that happen according to me. So I'm not asking for anything out of the will of God for my life. And so when, when you're, when you say, God, let your will be done with me then your will will always be done because you will always be seeking what God is seeking for you. You will always want what God wants for you. And you won't want anything outside of that because it's not God's will. Living our best life, living our blessed life. We have to then seek righteousness, seek personal righteousness for ourselves. So not only are we to seek the kingdom of God, but we're also to seek his righteousness, his goodness, we are to seek God's, not only his control over us, because there is, that is that. You know, we talk about self-control being one of the fruit of the spirit. But as we have self-control, the Lord then controls us. Why? Because we know what it is that he wants to do in our lives. But not only his control over us should we seek, we should seek the character of God that that works in us. What is God's character? Love, forgiveness. Oh, wow. Those are not dirty words, but those are words that we should be living by. Love and forgiveness for one another. So, so we have to not, you know, it's like, um, it's like love. Love is an action. And it isn't something that you always inwardly express, but it's something that's expressed on the outside, just like righteousness. Sure, it can be what happens on the inside of you. But it is also what happens on the outside of you. It's also expressed outwardly. Why is it expressed outwardly? Because we talk about a man's character being an outward expression of whatever is controlling you on the inside. And so whatever is controlling you on the inside, that's what manifests on the outside of you. And so when you are seeking righteousness, that may be something controlling you on the inside, but it should manifest on the outside to what? Faith faith. So your character is seen by what your conduct in the Lord of Christ, in the word of God. Proverbs 20, 12 says the hearing ear and the seeing eye, the Lord had made both of them. He made them both, meaning he wants to control them both so that you can see the right things and so that you can hear the right things. And so that those things will impact you. Yes. From the inside, but it'll be manifested on the outside of you. So that when people see you, they see the kingdom inside of you. They see the kingdom working at work in you. And if the kingdom can be at work in you, then surely it can be at work in those that are watching you. Listen, you're, you're never going to make a difference in your community. You never make a difference in your region, in the world, until the world sees a difference in you. And some of us, some of you, listen, you've not been walking this Christian walk a long time, and some of you have, but it's only until someone sees a difference in you that you know that you are walking in the will and in the way of God. 
that you are walking toward the kingdom of God, when you are seeking God, someone has to see a difference in you. And when they see that difference, listen, you can't go back. You can't go back to the old way. There's some things that we still need to have cut away. And as the difference is being seen in you more and more every day, every day, some of the old has to be removed. So the old has to be removed. You cannot continue to fill a full glass. Something has to come out in order for you to put more into it. So if your glass, if your life is filled with the old, is filled with old sins, is filled with old things, you got to remove some of those in order to put the new in so that people can see the kingdom of God at work through you. Yes. So when we're walking this walk, you know, the Bible says, you know, they will know you are Christians by what? By the love that you show. They will know that you are Christians by the love that you show. And so you've got to desire a walk with God. And what is it? Like I said, that having the mind of Christ, the mind of forgiveness, the mind of love, you've got to desire it. What do you really want your life to be? Do you want to continue to live a life of struggle, a life of turmoil, listen, a life of inconsistency? Or do you want a life of stability, a life of love, a life of blessings, a life of the promise of God being manifested in your life? The Bible says in Matthew 5 and 6, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are you if you hunger and and thirst after righteousness, for you shall be filled with righteousness. So you have to you have to have a desire to do the right thing. You got to have a desire to be right. You know, so say, you say, Pastor, you know, why would you say that? Because some people look not about the right. You got to have a desire to do the right thing. You got to have a desire to live right as much as you can. You have to have a desire to want the things of God for your life. And I know you're saying, well, everybody wants the things of God, but how bad do you want the things of God? How bad do you want them? Are you willing to put God first? Are you willing to pursue God? Are you willing to seek the Lord? Are you willing to desire after him? Listen, you got to seek righteousness, the right thing. God, God is not interested in your righteousness. He's only interested in his righteousness because listen, the Bible says there is a way that seems right to man, but the way of that, that's the end of that is destruction. We're not talking about man's righteousness we're talking about the righteousness of God, what God has shown you in the word of God. That's what God is interested in. He's not, and he's not necessarily interested in what you can do for him because he doesn't need us to do anything. God has everything under control. What he is interested in is what he can do through you. What can he do through you? I'm talking about living your blessed life. There, there are, you know, when we seek righteousness, you know, there is a difference between self-righteousness and the righteousness of God. And we got to understand what that is. Because many times we can say, I did it. It was me. I'm doing it. And that's self-righteousness. But you have got to seek God. You got to say, God, I didn't do that. I didn't nothing to do with this. I was just a vessel being used by you. I didn't have nothing to do with this. Because if I wasn't there to, to make it happen, Lord, you would have found somebody else. And so I thank you, God, that you are using us as vessels to carry out your will, to carry out your word, Lord God. So righteousness, listen, before you live righteousness, you got to be able to, God has to give it to you. You got to seek it. So Jesus came and he died that you might have the righteousness of God. He died that you may have the righteousness of God. And when you have the righteousness of God, I'm telling you, you are able to live your best life. And when you do that, listen, I'm out of time. You can see the promised prosperity that God has for you. The Lord has promised things to you. Because what did he say? He says that when you seek his kingdom, when you seek the king, and when you seek his righteousness, he says all things shall be added unto you. What things is that? The Lord said all things. He says, he was talking about the things that people worry about. What, what do you worry about? You worry about finances. You worry about good relationships. You worry about your marriage. You worry about your employment. You worry about your mental stability. You worry about your Christian walk. All he says, whatever it is that you're concerned about, he said, those things will be done for you. They will be added up for you. Sometimes, again, we worry about finances. The Bible says, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moths and rust 
uh, uh, and done corrupted. He says, and where thieves break through and steal it. He said, don't worry about that. He says, listen, I have even I even got the clothes. He says, therefore I said, you take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, what you shall drink, for your body, what you shall put on. God says, it's not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment. The Lord is saying, listen, when you seek me first, I'll take care of everything. That's how you live your blessed life. Your best life. He says, when you seek me first, I'll take care of everything. He says, he told the people about, you know, even, even we, we, we diet all the time. He says, in verse 27, he says, which of you are taking thought can add one cubit to your stature? Can you build yourself up? The Lord is saying, I got all that under control. I'm taking care of it all. What is, what is that? He says, all things will be added unto you. It means you don't have to worry about anything. You don't have to walk around in want. You don't have to walk around in need. Listen. And, it, and I tell you this, the, the God doesn't give you everything that you want. I'm glad that he doesn't because if he did, some of the stuff that we wanted we, wouldn't be good for us anyway. He doesn't give us all the things that he wants. But he does. But the Bible says, I will supply your every need according to my riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Everything that you need, the Lord says, I will give it to you. So whatever that thing is, whether it's food, whether it's clothing, whether it's money, the Lord says, I will give you strength. He says, listen, I will give strength to the weak. I will teach them to obey my words. If you obey, obey the words of God, you will live by those words. Health, the Lord says, I will give you health. Riches, he says, I will give you riches. Power, I will give you power. Listen, power that you can praise God. Power that you can lift your hands. Power that you can speak a thing and it shall come to pass. That you can decree and declare a thing and it shall be made manifest in you. There is nothing that you could ask that the Lord won't do according to his will. And because of that, listen, you will be living your blessed, best life. Starting today, put your priorities in order. Put your priorities in order. And when you do that, God says all the things that you need, all things shall be added unto you. I hope this meditation has been a blessing to somebody to, to be able to now just start walking in the things that God has for you to walk in. There's no reason for us to be in lack. There's no reason for us to be in despair. There's no reason for us to be in distress. Listen, even all the things, even peace, you can ask God for peace. And he says, I will give you peace that surpasses all understanding. You won't even know where it came from. In the midst of struggle, in the midst of turmoil, in the midst of bad health, the Lord says, I will give you peace. Again, faith. So you have the faith to know that in all things, I'm going to work it out for your good. And it will be for your good. And you can rest in that. The Lord loves you so much. He loves you so much. You know, do you want to make the rest of your life the best of your life? You got to, in order for you to do that, you got to allow Jesus Christ to be your Lord, the risen Savior. Not just through resurrection, through the Lenten season, through Holy Week, through Good Friday, through the Resurrection Sunday. Not just then, but every day of your life. You got to put him first. Put him first and live every moment with him. Live every moment for him and allow him to take care of the rest. And I'm telling you, people of God, he will do it. Father God, we just bless your name. I thank you, Lord God, just for who you are. You are the risen king, Lord God. You are the savior, Lord God, of the world. And because of that, God, we will praise you. We will bless your mighty name. God, we will give your name the praise and the glory. I thank you, Lord God, as we readjust ourselves, as we shift our priorities, Lord God. Lord, we first of all repent, Lord God, where we didn't put you first. We repent, Lord God, when we went to others instead of coming to you, God. We repent, Lord God, when we reach for the alcohol, God, to ease our nerves. Or, or God, even the cigarettes, to ease our nerves, Lord God, instead of going to you. Lord, who will give us peace? You promised us the peace, oh God. You promised you would work out every situation, God, according to your word, God. And we believe you for that. And Lord, in order for us to live our best life, I thank you, Lord God, that we have, God, committed ourselves to putting you first. 
Lord, first in everything that we do, everything that we say, Lord God, even God in the responses that we have to people that may come up to us, Lord God, not knowing who you are. God, we will think about those things, Lord God, and God ask you, consider God what it is that you are saying to us, Lord God, that we might give the right response, the proper response, oh God, that people will see the righteousness inside of us, the kingdom in us, and that there will be a change in our lives. Lord God, I thank you for the people of God that have come on this meditation this morning, oh God, and have come, have committed themselves, God. They have sacrificed, Lord God, to hear a word from you. And I thank you, Lord God, for it. And I bless them, Lord God, with every promise that they stand in need of, every promise, Lord God, that you have given to them, Lord. Bless them with it, God, that they might know who you are. God, help them, God, God, to, to seek you, God, to search for you, Lord God, to advance toward you, Lord God, that everything else, God, that would try to hinder them, Lord God, would move out of the way. You, God, will have a straight path, God, so that they can see who you are for their lives and be blessed by it. We thank you for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, people of God. Listen, listen I love you all with the love of Jesus. This is Monday. It's going to be a great day. It's going to be a great week. And matter of fact, this is the first day of the best day of my life because I have reprioritized situations, things in my life. And God is first. We've put him first. Because he is first, he will make sure, listen, that I receive every blessing, every blessed thing that he's promised to me. Not only me, but listen to those who are connected to me. I thank the Lord for divine connections. I'm getting off of here, but I thank God for divine connections. I thank him for those who walk with us. I praise you, oh God, just for who you are. Listen, you all have a wonderful day. I love you with the love of Jesus. You go in peace. And share the word.